or behind uh, a merit pay system. I've uh, worked in an institution for 16 years and participated in that uh, system where we had merit pay. Uh, it is a difficult uh, system to administer, requires very careful attention. Uh, you have to make sure that uh, when judgments are made about uh, who is going to get um, a higher increase than the average that those decisions are made on the basis of good information and done very carefully. But I think it can be done and I think if it's done well it then gives tremendous incentives to those people who are outstanding and uh, that's, that's uh, one of the very important uh, results and uh, goals of a merit pay system. Uh, those people who are ambitious and who are excited about their fields want to be recognized and they deserve to be recognized. Yes? A uh, concern, I think, here at Ball State has been the fact that there have been so many factions and there has been so much turmoil over the last several years. This brings my question, and, and that is, is it possible for you as a leader to give us a sense of consensus about an underlying theme that will bring us all together? Uh, can you comment on, first of all, how you as a leader will try to develop a theme of consensus here at Ball State? I'm always impressed with how uh, people at uh, almost every institution think they have uh, a lot of problems and all the other institutions in the country seem to be going along very smoothly and don't have uh, controversy or problems. I can assure you that there are lots of issues across the country at, uh, on campuses and I, uh, from what I have been able to learn about uh, the controversies uh, at Ball State in the last several years, I don't think they're necessarily unusual nor do I think they are controversies that need to be, uh, that we need to be a great, uh, greatly concerned about. Uh, in, in terms of, of um, uh, a central theme or a way of bringing, bringing the community get together, that certainly would be a goal of mine. It's, I think, a goal of any new leader that's coming onto a campus. Um, whether or not that can be accomplished or not, we'll just have to see. We'll certainly be trying to do that. I think um, uh, one of the goals that obviously uh, we want to work on, whether or not it's the unifying theme or not, is a kind of commitment to, to excellence. Uh, striving to be better than, than, than we are. Uh, if, um, if we as a, an administration and faculty and trustees representing a university can't be, try, can't be a good model for students, demonstrating that we're trying to be the very best we can be, trying to realize our potential, then it's awfully difficult for us to uh, to ask students to strive to be the very best they can be. We would hope that uh, students who leave Ball State University uh, and either go to graduate school or to uh, take positions would be striving, would be trying to realize their potential. And I think those of us within the institution need to be good models. Uh, that means that, uh, that we need to try to be good. And although it's almost a cliche to say that we should strive for excellence, that is in fact, I think, the central theme of any good university and uh, that's something that uh, I know Provost Cook has been working very hard on and I certainly support that. Yes? Uh, if, if I could follow up the question please. Uh, since students are our clients really here at Ball State uh, and since I believe you have some background in student personnel, yes. uh, how is your experience, I think you had 16 years at Delaware there, uh, how will you bring those kinds of uh, skills to, to make our student body more aggressive as uh, people in terms of thinking, but also in terms of social fabric, in terms of doing their thing? Basically, you have two kinds of focus on the campus. You have the academic thinking and you have the development of the human being. How are you going to bring your skills to make that aspect of Ball State better? Well, I think the first thing that I would say is that um, I would support that kind of thrust. Uh, obviously, the president isn't going to, to make that happen unless he or she supports the faculty and the, and the student affairs staff and the other support staff within the institution that work directly with students. So uh, the first thing that has to happen is that those people have to see that, uh, 
the, the senior administration supports that, that's those sorts of activities that you're referring to. In terms of, uh, of my experience in student affairs and working with students uh, and working with staff who work with students, I feel very confident. Uh, first of all, I, I think that's a very important role for a university to play, a very important function, and it ought to be uh, uh, it ought to be a good function. It ought to be done as well as it can possibly be done on a university campus. And I know uh, Vice President Byrell has been working on that for a number of years. I have, I've had uh, the good fortune of, uh, of uh, being acquainted with uh, Vice President Byrell for a number of years, and I've, I've always been impressed with the quality of the student affairs program at Ball State, even before I uh, knew very much about uh, the university other than the student affairs program. But um, I think that um, uh, the, the, um, one of the things that I uh, am very comfortable with is being able to distinguish between good student affairs programs when I see them. And um, you can count on uh, me acting as president to support those kinds of activities. Where are we? Oh, I'm Karen Trevino from the Evening Press. I really wanted to direct my question to Mrs. Morgan, if I could. Um, okay. I understand you've been quite active in uh, state government in Delaware while a resident there, and I was wondering what sort of a role you plan on taking here in Memphis. Do you want to come up here, Sandra? I'm, I'm re reluctant to relinquish this microphone, but if you, <laughs> if you want to come up here, uh, you can. Maybe I can do it. IUP. Uh, I'm just wondering what your views are uh, on balancing athletic funding with academic. When I met with a group of students uh, uh, about a month ago on the campus, uh, one student asked me the question about uh, uh, would I support increased funding for athletics, and I told him that uh, he didn't really expect me to answer that question when I was still interviewing for this position, did he? Um, I think that um, you have to look at the needs and aspirations and traditions of the institution before you make some judgment about uh, the level of funding or the kind of support that the administration should give the athletic program. A, a solid athletic program is an important and, um, and a helpful program to a university. It's, um, it's a kind of window through which some people perceive the institution. And if it's possible to have a high quality athletic program and to do it within the constraints of, of uh, the money that's available, then I think I certainly support that kind of program. We have, um, we have had some uh, discussion and controversy on my own campus about athletics over the past uh, couple of years, but I think it's been very healthy. Uh, the students uh, uh, fund, help fund uh, athletics on that campus, and the issue really was shall the students increase their level of funding to the athletic program. The, uh, the new athletic director proposed a significant increase. There was perhaps a two or three months deb debate last spring, and um, uh, he didn't get as much as he asked for, but he got some. Um, whether or not that's the right amount, I don't know, but I thought the debate was very healthy. We certainly are supporting a, a, a strengthening of our athletic program at that institution, but that's because of a very careful consideration of all the circumstances. It's a consideration of what it is that people want, what do students want, what do faculty want, what do the trustees want, what do the alumni want, and what do the members of the local community want. And one of the things that we've said is that if the local community and alumni, for example, are strong on improving or strengthening the athletic program, then they ought to be willing to put some money into it. And in that case, they have. And um, the feedback that we got before we, we made that commitment was that they would give some support to it financially, and they have, in fact, done that. And so I think that uh, that, that institution is on the way to strengthening the program. One of the things there we've said, and I don't simply mean to keep talking about another institution because I know you're interested in Ball State, but what I'm telling you is I simply don't know enough 
about the situation and about particularly the subtleties to make any kind of uh, a firm prediction or, or statement about it now. But um, uh, at, at that institution, we have said that um, we have a pretty strong instructional program and we try to uh, strive for quality in, in the things we do and we ought to do that with respect to athletics as well. And if we aren't going to strive for quality, then we ought to take another look and see how we could size down the program or, or uh, uh, deal with it in a way so that we can be strong and, and we can be proud of the program. And I would think from the, the talking with students and, and faculty and administration at Ball State that that's probably what Ball State wants too. Now how you get it funded, I'm not sure. Uh, that the, the high tech and information society which John Nesbitt says we're moving into or already there uh, is going to mean that we're going to have to do a better job training people or educating people in the technical areas. Uh, we simply need more people who can work in the uh, the development of robotics and the development of uh, sophisticated uh, computer programs and so forth. But, um, and that's a, that's a real need, but that kind of technology and that, um, that kind of, of climate is going to require a number of people to work uh, around the, tech, the technologists. Um, Whenever there are not going to be that many positions for electrical engineers and uh, people who build uh, build computers, but guided by them. Yes, Marie. Dr. Worthen, what attracted you to Ball State in this position? Well, uh, first of all, um, it's the kind of university that I feel comfortable in. Uh, I have had uh, about 21 years of experience in public universities at the University of Delaware and about five years at IUP. And these are institutions that serve uh, a broad range of students. And so my first um, reason for being interested was because it seemed to be a university that I think that uh, I would fit well with and that I could make a contribution to and provide some leadership for. Uh, once we had the opportunity to visit, I was very much impressed with the people. Uh, I was impressed with the students and the faculty and the, certainly the members of the search committee. Everyone seemed to be um, expressing a great deal of uh, interest and concern about uh, uh, choosing uh, the right person. They seemed to be demonstrating loyalty to the institution and uh, seemed to be very enthusiastic about it. And, and I think if the people, after all, a university is uh, really the people. It's, uh, it's buildings and it's tradition, but primarily it's the people who are here, and if they're interested and concerned and excited about it, then certainly it makes uh, candidates feel that same way. So those are the things that attracted us in the first place. One more question. Sure. What do you see ahead in the next 10 years for universities such as ours and yours? I think the next 10 years are going to be relatively difficult, but I don't think that means that uh, institutions should uh, simply uh, uh, adopt a strategy of uh, trying to survive or muddle through. I think uh, an institution like Ball State University needs to develop a strategy so that it will move through this next 10 years, which will, I think, be fairly difficult for higher education, uh, so that uh, by the end of that period, uh, we could look back and say that uh, the institution is stronger then even uh, stronger than it is today. The, the reason that I think um, higher education is facing some difficult um, issues is because uh, the number of students who are graduating from high school is going to continue to decline. It has been declining and it will decline even further by uh, through about 1994. And I don't believe that uh, legislatures across the country are going to provide enough funds for public institutions to catch up on all the things that they have been deferring for the past number of years when budgets have been tight. Uh, of course, legislatures are um, 
they try to do the very best they can uh, when budget uh, requests come from higher education, but they simply can't give more money than they have. And so it's because of those two factors, the, the press on enrollment and because of the uh, pressure from the budget that I think uh, institutions need to really have a solid strategic plan as to how they're going to move through this, this period.